morning, morning. I trust this just works the regular way, does it? Sort of just press buttons and stuff. Um, very pleased to be here. Well, let's just go through this presentation, which is self-evident. It would have been really interesting, actually, that previous presenter, for you saying those, those quite sensible comments. If I don't know the other side saying, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you, if, you, if you need the money, you can't raise it. If you don't need the money, you can raise it. That sort of stuff, yeah? Very, some very good, very pungent comments there. Okay, here's the disclaimer. All right, the, the strategy we have is really focused on four, four pillars. First of all, we've got the central shaft, which you're going to see quite a lot of, which locks in some near-term, very low-risk growth in the context of mining. And that sees us increasing our production to... This year we'll do about 67,000 ounces. Last year we did 58,000 ounces. Next year we'll do 80,000 ounces. So 57, 67, 80,000 ounces. It's quite a significant step up. Um, which obviously boosts cash generation and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't matter, we don't have final words about it, we just judge by our actions. We've demonstrated over, over many years now a clear commitment to return money to shareholders by way of dividends and increasing dividends. And on top of a really sexy little highly cash productive asset in Zimbabwe, we're now getting our hands on some new opportunities in Zimbabwe which we think are really attractive and lock in some longer term growth. Just by way of background, we're an established profitable gold producer uh, based on Blanket Mine in the south of, south of Zimbabwe. Uh, we also, in addition to that highly cash generative asset, we have um, uh, an option agreement over, a, over an exploration project in Gweru in the Midlands. And in addition, more recently, and it's not actually on this slide, we're just in the process of getting our hands on uh, some further mining claims, which have got a, a resource base of just under a million ounces already. And that's a four million dollar deal, should close the next day or so. We're a Jersey company, Jersey Channel Islands. We cheerfully pay tax in Zimbabwe, and a bit less cheerfully in South Africa. We don't want to pay tax in, in areas where we don't have operations like the UK or Canada. So we move the holding company to a, a tax neutral jurisdiction, uh, i.e. Jersey which means our dividends don't, pay, don't incur any um, withholding tax. We're listed on New York, which has got by far the biggest volume. And one of the problems you raised is we're also listed on AIM, where liquidity kind of um, goes and goes. It doesn't really come at all. It doesn't come and go, it just goes. Uh, very low liquidity in London, unfortunately. We're highly cashed up. Uh, we've got nearly $17 million of cash at the end of June. Um, and we're on a, a laughably low PE ratio of uh, 4.7 times adjusted. Uh, quarterly um, profits, very low, very low, um, very low valuation. <coughs> Last year our turnover was bang on $100 million, and this year, as I said, we're aiming to produce about 67,000 ounces. We have, um, we have, um, in terms of MNI resources, 900,000 ounces, and inferred another 866. It's fair to say we've not been able to do deep level exploration for quite some time now for logistical constraints, which I'll, I'll outline in a moment. So we're very comfortable that we can grow that resource base uh, over time. Um, but already we've got, we've got a 13-year life of mine, which, we, which we, we're confident we can extend further. I've mentioned the dividend. We've paid the dividend since, since 2012, uh, just less than seven US cents per quarter per share. And then uh, from January 2020, as we could see our way, we were getting towards the end of a substantial investment program. Uh, we were also helped by the rising gold price. We were more comfortable in our cash position, so we started to increase the dividend in January 2020. So we've pretty much doubled the dividend, just over doubled the dividend over the course of the last two years. It's now running at 14 cents per quarter, which I think must be pretty much unprecedented in the gold space. Um, the total dividend for the year costs about $6 million. Um, and when blank is running at 80,000 ounces a year, which it will be from January onwards, nearly as now, we'll be collecting about 30, 35 million dollars. So a very significant scope to increase the dividend further and also to splash some cash on some new, new projects. So the dividend, we don't have a dividend policy as such, we don't lock ourselves to paying out this percentage of cash flow, this percentage of earnings, we want flexibility to run the company as we see fit, uh, but don't have no, have no doubt about the importance of the dividend to the management team and to shareholders. We take our ESG uh, responsibilities very seriously. Uh, we, we feel we, we do a good job in that area. We haven't necessarily explained it particularly well until Camilla came along and she wrote a, a, um, a lovely ESG report which we published uh, earlier on this year. So if, if you want more information about our corporate governance, our health and safety, the people we employ, what we do for the environment, 
and our community relations that's all set out in the ESG report which is available on our website. But I'm going to talk about the central shaft now and I believe, I believe there's a little video, this is the first time we've tried this, so let's see if it works. What we've done over the last seven years or so is we've built this, it's a, it's a central shaft, it costs 67 million dollars. You can see that our trucks go 90 miles an hour so that we can get as much gold out as quickly as possible. <laughs> and then suddenly it slows down as we're looking. It's a four compartment shaft, six, six meters diameter, goes down to 1200 meters in a single drop. Um, and we're very proud of that. This effectively is the, the top bit which reflects the, the mine that we're building underneath the old mine. The existing headgear is just passing behind the central shaft there and all those white buildings looks a bit like Mykonos. Uh, that's the, that's the, the mine village which um, accommodates um, about 5,000 people. So we're going to talk about that in a bit more detail, but we're very proud of what we've achieved there. It's probably the biggest engineering project in Zimbabwe over the last decade or so, probably longer. To put what you've seen there in context, that's a, a long section of the mining area, three kilometres from left to right. Uh, the grey bits, they're all stoked out. We bought this mine off Kinross in 2006. The mine's been running since, two, since 1905, I think, just before the Russian Revolution. So, you know, it's, it's not surprising that certain areas have been stoked out. And what you see here is that's the green, the green stuff that's just come in. That's the infrastructure that was there when we bought the mine off Kinross in 2006. And you can see, helpfully, it gives you great access to areas where there isn't very much left to mine. <laughs> so what we've done is we've sunk this new shaft from surface down to 1200 meters and then horizontal development on uh, three levels in two directions which just gives you access to those deeper level resources both for production but also more importantly for uh, exploration as well because given the nature of these ore bodies you can't really drill from surface you've got to get down down at depth to drill deeper and so we're, we're very confident having spent all this money uh, the shaft is now operating um, it's wasting currently it's wasting waste material to start wasting or towards the end of the year. This sets us up now for the next, for the next sort of 15, 13 years, certainly, possibly longer, um, but also it's got significant uh, operating advantages. You know, the shaft drops people to, the, to, to their working areas much more quickly, much more efficiently, they're right in the middle, so they don't need to walk so far. It's, 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 it really is constructing a brand new first, first world mine underneath the rather creaky um, older mine. To convert this into a very sexy little sort of 3D format, uh, this is the mining area, you can see, on the surface. You can see central shaft and, and the, the number four shaft. Going underground, you should be able to see a series of near vertical ore bodies with the, which splits out, sort of measured, indicated, and inferred. And then you can see the exploration targets at depth. You can see the central shaft, the right thing going down, 1.2 kilometers. There was stuff in white, all those little lines in white, that's the existing infrastructure. Then this, the stuff that's the, the little sort of grid complex that's coming in in, um, in purple there, that is the, the new infrastructure that we're uh, in the process of putting underground, simply to extract the uh, extract the material. Okay, that's enough videos. We can get back to right. The only significant operating difficulty we face in Zimbabwe is electricity. I mean, the electricity situation is shocking. You can't get it, and when you do get it, it's subject to great sp spikes and troughs in the voltage, which if you don't regulate that, will fry our equipment. So recognizing that it's not going to get any better, and actually it's going to get a lot worse, we, we embarked on a, uh, a project, a first phase of a solar project. So we're putting in 12 megawatts of, uh, of solar, which will provide about 27% of blankets average daily usage and thereby reduce our reliance on the grid and also on the diesel generators. When the grid goes wrong we can we can run the whole mine using diesel gensets so we've got 18 megawatts of installed diesel capacity which is somewhat expensive so when when we're running them all at full tilt that's a litre every second um, but more and that's good that's obviously got environmental implications but it has implications for production. Getting, getting your hands on very large amounts of diesel at very short notice can be a challenge. So frankly, it all points to moving towards solar. So we're putting the first, the first solar project is on its way already. We funded it because we had to have the cash in the bank before we could, before we could engage the EPC contractor. So we raised uh, 14 million, 13, 12 million dollars in New York uh, last year. Again, our, the share price was high. We were fully cashed up. We didn't actually need the money. But it was a great it was a great opportunity to take advantage of good market conditions to raise it 
And we're currently now spending that money to put the plant um, put the plant in. We had thought it was going to be operational by April next year, but uh, supply difficulties in China, mainly the rationing of um, of uh, power to Chinese manufacturers, is, is delaying the, the the manufacture of the of the solar solar panels. But it's on its way, and already we're now thinking about how to put in a, a further phase to further increase our uh, solar our solar capacity, and that will require other batteries and or some sort of engagement with the, the, the government so that we can give them surplus power during the day and then get it back at night. So we, we, this is only a first step. And then looking at the new opportunities. Um, the first we've got is the, the one we're most excited about and it's the most recent is, is a property called, called Marley Green, which is in the Midlands. Uh, and we're buying that for $4 million in cash. Uh, that deal will hopefully complete within the next few days. And it already has a mineral resource of just under a million ounces, uh, at a grade of just under 1.9 grams a tonne. Difference is this will be an open cast. This will be an open cast opportunity, an open pit opportunity. Uh, and so a grade of 1.88 grams a tonne for open pit is, is really very attractive. In addition, we're very comfortable that, um, or we're confident that there is further extensions, both uh, a long strike and a depth. So the objective over the course of the next sort of 18 months to two years will be to spend a couple of million dollars to uh, drill out to improve the confidence level of the existing resource and then move as quickly as we can to actually set up a mining operation and make money out of it. Thereafter, we'll do further exploration, uh, a long strike to extend that resource base and also, also consider going down to depth. But we're not going to spend five years and a load of money proving out the massive resource base. We'd much rather um, confirm what we've got there and actually move to a productive mine as, as quickly as we can and start making money for ourselves, our shareholders, and also start paying taxes and employing more people. Then the other opportunity, which is still attractive, but just not as, not as attractive in our minds as, as the as Marley Green, but it's still got merit, is Connemara North, where we acquired uh, an option to explore. So it cost us about $300,000 to acquire that. Um, we're doing the evaluations at the moment. If we like what we see, we'll then exercise that option and get control of that asset for a payment of $5 million. Again, that's in the Midlands, just as, as Marley Green is. Uh, so it's quite remote, for, it's, quite, it's quite a long way from our, our blanket operation. So these mines will be standalone operations. They wouldn't be leveraging or piggybacking off the uh, infrastructure of blanket. So in terms of the outlook, we've got a significant increase in production from just less than 60,000 ounces last year to 80,000 ounces from 2022 onwards. Obviously more ounces means more cash flow. Uh, the economies of scale for this operation are quite substantial. The marginal cost per ounce is probably $150 an ounce. So every extra ounce only costs me $150, so it's a lot of profit from those extra ounces. Um, and actually we also expect uh, the high level of capex that we've been spending over the last sort of five, six years to begin to tail away quite, quite significantly. We have the potential because of central shaft to do more exploration at depth. We should extend the life of mine beyond 2034. We don't, we don't, we've, got, we've got a very strong record in terms of returning money to shareholders and you should also should understand now that we have the capacity to further increase the dividend and also to start to invest in new properties, both Connemara and Marley Green. And as well as Connemara and Marley Green, we, we still look for other opportunities in, in Zimbabwe and we're optimistic we can make, um, make some progress there. So we think after seven years of really, really very hard work and spending you know, approximately $20 million a year, we think we really are poised to take advantage of what we see as a cyclical, cyclically trending up gold price. Um, and we're very, very optimistic about where we are. Contacts on here, um, we're very accessible. Uh, drop us an email, we try and answer questions. Uh, but I think we're finished, so I'll take, so we can take, oh, we do, uh, well, there's some appendices here. We can go into, we can go, if, if they become relevant, we can deal with those later. I think we should open for questions. Yeah.